The most dangerous time in a domestic violence relationship is when the victim is planning to leave, has told the abuser of their intention to leave or to end the relationship, and in a period of time after the relationship breaks down and there is a separation. Research indicates that the first three months after leaving, escaping, an abusive relationship is the most dangerous. I have read studies that indicate up to 12 months is still a very dangerous time. And a lot of us who have left abusive relationships will know that that abuse can last longer than 12 months. The threats can, or the threat of harm, can be present much longer than 12 months, especially if you are attempting to co-parent, if you have children together that you are required to be in contact with, if you were married and need to start divorce proceedings, if you shared assets and need to start property settlement. Abuse can continue for a long time. The threat of to, to your safety, the way that you, you know, feel, how scared you become, how worried you are that something, something else will happen can last a lot longer. But there is no doubt that starting to leave, planning to leave, intending to leave, and up until a period of time after the relationship breaks down is a very dangerous time. How did I leave my abusive relationship? I got to the stage where I knew, I absolutely knew and believed to be true that he would kill me if I didn't leave. If I stayed in the relationship, I believed that he would kill me. It was escalating. It's always a sign when the violence is getting more and more frequent and it becomes more harmful and they become more abusive and aggressive and angry and threatening and accusing you of lots of different stuff, you know, generally cheating. Um, when they accuse you and they're making accusations and it, you just know it's getting worse and you are getting more fearful, that's a really dangerous time. And I believed he would kill me. I needed police intervention. I needed an AVO. I had to breach an AVO a few months after I, I got the first one. And it was, it was a really difficult time, but I had to create safety for myself. And that very first safety was my physical safety. I had to leave the relationship. I had to get out of it. I had to create safety for myself because I believed he would kill me. The next one is emotional safety. That is so hard when you are still required to be in contact with your abuser, whether it's with children, whether it's because there is not a no contact AVO in place and they can still communicate with you. That is so, it's so challenging because you don't know when they're going to message you, what they're going to say. You overthink the tone, the words, what they might mean, what might happen. There's no emotional safety in that and you need to create physical and emotional safety in order to get yourself to a point where you can start to move forward and process what's going on and think and heal and really start to move forward through it. You can't do that when you're living in stress mode, in survival mode, wondering where they are, what they're doing, when you're going to hear from the ne them next, what might happen, if they might send somebody over, if they're watching you, if they're stalking your social media accounts, if they're messaging your family and friends. And yes, I've experienced all of that. But you need to create that physical and emotional safety for yourself. It is so important. If that means leaving the relationship, then that's what you need to make a plan for. And it's really difficult to just, and I've done it on several occasions. I just grabbed my children. Sometimes I was able to pack a bag. Sometimes I didn't and I just left. And I always went back because I just didn't have any plans in place. I didn't know what to do next. I didn't have anything more than, you know, what we were wearing sometimes. So there does need to be plans in place and your safety is of utmost importance in situations like this because abusive relationships are dangerous 
and an abusive relationship can kill you. It, it does kill you. We read about it all the time. My heart is breaking over how many incidences where we're seeing lately of murders and just victims who don't know what else to do and don't have the support and don't know how to move forward and create safety for themselves. So absolutely planning is vital, I believe, um, because that's my experience. But you need to create that safety for yourself. And abuse is never your fault. Never, ever, ever your fault. And it's not your job to fix anyone. And it's not your job to support anyone. Um, your abuser, whether they are currently in your life, whether they, anybody, anybody future, it's not your job. They are an adult and they have their own healing paths or whatever they need to do with professionals and with services that can really specifically help them in a way that they need. It's not your job. It's not your responsibility. You're not qualified. You are not emotionally disconnected from the situation to be able to support somebody through whatever they are experiencing through mental health, substance use, trauma, through whatever, you know, something that happened to them growing up that they still need to deal with, loss and grief. That's their job. It's not yours. And you can't do it from in the relationship. And what I worry about is that, you know, particularly as women, we are, we do have that, you know, label of, it's not so much a label, that's the wrong word, but we do have that innate, you know, sense of caring and nurturing and wanting to help people and wanting to support people. And there's nothing wrong with that. But when your safety is compromised, then you need to think about yourself first and foremost and create physical safety and emotional safety. You can't move forward until you have at least that as a baseline. And then just keep building on that. And even if you are in the relationship at the moment and you're planning to leave or you're wondering about whether you should leave, start creating those moments of physical and emotional safety as often as you can. And physical safety is, you know, being able to spend that uh, even a few moments by yourself with no threat of harm. And that can be if, you know, he's out or you're out or you retreat to your bedroom and just have a couple of moments, um, whether you go to work and you can just use your lunch break just to really just embody that safety and feel safe. Um, and that's with emotional safety as well, that deep, slow breathing, resetting your nervous system, moving your body, um, really taking care of yourself and just reminding yourself that where you sit, I'm safe. I am safe. I am safe. Because your body and mind need to know that. It needs to know that it's safe in those moments, that you are safe, in order to really help your body and your functioning and your digestive system, your immune system, your healing, um, that needs to be activated. And when you're living in stress, that's that can't happen because all of your energy goes to surviving whatever threat um, you see, hear, detect, um, and are worried about. So safety, I cannot say it enough. It is just so important and to be where I am today, I had to leave the relationship. It was abusive. I was made to feel worthless and, you know, ugly and dumb and fat and like I didn't matter. And you just can't create a life from that place. You just can't. And so none of it's ever your fault. You don't ever deserve it, but nobody's going to do it for you. Nobody did any of my healing for you, for me. Um, all healing is self-healing. People can hold space for you. Professionals can guide you through processes and give you tools and strategies. But all healing is self-healing. And, and it becomes your responsibility because you don't want to give that responsibility to anybody else. I don't ever want anybody else to be responsible for my healing because I know me best. 
I know what I want, I know what I've been through, and I know what works for me. And if it doesn't work for me, I can shift and I can do something different. And the stuff that does work for me, I can use over and over and over. But if somebody else were telling me what to do, they may be way off the mark. So you have to take that responsibility for yourself because nobody's going to do it for you. And because you deserve it, you deserve it. And every it is such a basic human right to feel safe. It's everything. You can't create anything or live any kind of beautiful life when you don't feel safe, either within your own body, within your own home, within your family, within your community. If you don't feel safe, it's just, we can't really, we can't get there from there. You can't get over there from not feeling safe here. Physical safety, emotional safety. If you need support to leave an abusive relationship, please reach out. There are a number of helplines around. There are a number of domestic violence services around in your local area. If you are in immediate danger, please call the police. If your safety is immediately at threat, you need the police. Because if you are not safe, then... Who knows what will happen? And it's just, we can't keep living like this. We can't keep living like this. Too many of us are dying each and every week and we can't keep living like this. If you need support, reach out. Reach out to any of your local services. Reach out to an online support group. Start talking to people. Start creating that safety, those moments of safety throughout your day and keep building on that. And always remember that you are significant because you are and I love you because you exist. And if you are living with abuse at the moment, please know that it's not your fault. If you have ever lived with abuse, it's not your fault. But I want you to take your I want you to take responsibility for your own healing and moving forward and really getting yourself into a place that you deserve to be in and that you can wake up in the morning and look forward to the day and enjoy the life you live. I want that for everyone. I'm Lisa from Lisa Sanctuary. Please like, share, subscribe so my message, <clears throat> excuse me, so my message gets out there to more people who need it, who want it, who will, you know, really resonate with it because I'm on a mission to heal the trauma, heal the pain, and to really create something beautiful here.